Hi, thanks for joining. In this video, we will go over the first steps in Timber to get you started in no time. So let's begin. If you just logged into a new Timber instance for the first time, you'll see two main options you can take to get you started. The first, create knowledge graph in order to start modeling your data, and the second, connect data source in order to set up a connection to your database. If, however, you logged into an existing Timber instance, you can simply click on the Manage tab and select one of two corresponding buttons and follow the same steps. So let's start with creating a new data model by clicking on Create Knowledge Graph. Great! Now in the pop-up window, the first thing to define is if we'd like to assign the new data model to a domain. We can choose a domain from the list if any exist, or we can create a new domain by clicking on the list and writing its name. In our case, we'll create a sales domain. Next, we'll name our knowledge graph. In this case, let's call it sales data model. We can also add descriptions if we want to add additional information for users who will use the data model in the future. Next, we have the option to either create the knowledge graph or create the knowledge graph and configure. We'll go ahead with Create Knowledge Graph and Configure as we also want to set up a data source connection and bind it to our data model. In the next window, we see three options for configuration. The first is for the data sources, the second is for the Knowledge Graph settings, and the third is for the SQL template variables we may want to add. We'll start with the data sources. Here, we can open the drop-down menu and select to add any data source that was already added to the platform. If there are no database connections yet, like in this scenario, we can click on Add New Data Source. Here, you can choose to set up the connection using simple credentials or by using a JDBC URL. In both cases, you'll simply choose the relevant data source from the list and fill in the details to make the connection. In order to execute queries across two or more databases, you'll need to add the virtualization engine if your Timber instance supports it. So for this example, let's set up a quick connection to MySQL. Great! In cases where we add more than one data source, Timber would need to know which one will serve as the default data source to query the data model. When using virtualization, simply choose it as the active data source so Timber can join the distributed queries. Next, we'll move on to the knowledge graph configurations. Here, we can define different behaviors of the knowledge graph, such as quote identifier by turning it on or off, the default transitivity level, which allows us to define the recursiveness level that will be exposed to the users in the metadata when using a transitive relationship. This does not mean that the relationships are limited to only three recursive levels. Next, we have the type of the entity label, which in most cases won't change. After that, we can set the schema where Timber can persist the output of the graph algorithm queries. Below that, we can set the relationship graph depth which refers to the D-Timber schema and how many hops of relationships we would like to expose in the metadata when using D-Timber concepts. We can also choose to enable or disable the D-Timber traversals using the toggle below. Lastly, we could set the target schema cache, which refers to the refresh interval of the database schemas to load the metadata. Besides these default configurations, you can also add your own custom configurations. For more information about additional configurations that can be added, please refer to the Timber documentation. The third and final tab is SQL template variables, which enables users to leverage Jinja templates to dynamically generate SQL queries. These templates facilitate the incorporation of ontology variables and user session variables into SQL queries, mappings, and ontology views, which can greatly enhance the flexibility and power of data manipulation and analysis. At this stage, all that's left to do is to click Save. And that's it. After creating a new data model and binding it to a data source, we can start designing our data model. In the next videos, we'll cover all the options you have in designing your data model, starting from manually defining a conceptual model, all the way to automatically creating the model from the database tables. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you in the next videos. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.